The Sea Glide is one of Subnautica's most trusty companions. Sleek, small, and able to drive you straight into a Reaper's mouth at 25 miles per hour. It even has an inbuilt flashlight for looking around the creature's stomach before you're digested. The creators really did think of everything when they designed the Sea Glide. But what if I told you that the Sea Glide was actually a real thing? And I don't just mean this little drone made by students that shares the same name, but bigger and yellow. All right, okay, maybe they're not always yellow, but this one certainly is. A Sea Glide, or as they are commonly known in the real world, a diver propulsion vehicle, or DPV, come in a range of different sizes, from large ones, to small ones, to explodey ones. As with many of humanity's more recent inventions, the DPV was born as a direct result of warfare. In 1909, not content with the conventional torpedo for the use of death delivery, a British officer by the name of Godfrey Herbert came up with the design for a manned torpedo that would be piloted by a human, and used to aim the explosive at an enemy ship. Pretty happy with his new design, he took the suggestion to the war office, and they had the following conversation. Alright lads, I've come up with this brand new way to attack the enemy. It's like one of those torpedo things that we've already got, except this time, you don't have to worry about aiming it, you can just drive it straight at them. That's great and all, Godfrey, but don't those things explode? That sounds a bit dangerous. Yeah, yeah, they, they do explode a little bit, but they are totally safe, I promise. Well, the war office didn't see it that way. They labelled it as impractical and unsafe, and that was the end of man torpedoes. Until those mad lads in Italy got a hold of the idea, and they thought they'd give it a go. They weren't as concerned as the British about the whole health and safety thing, and ended up using them in the opening years of World War II against the British. After the Italians damaged a number of British ships in port in the harbour of Alexandria, the British promptly decided that this whole idea was actually a great one after all, and decided to start using them themselves. The Italian nickname for the first human torpedo was the pig, because they apparently made a squealing noise and were very difficult to manoeuvre. Not very flattering, but maybe they would distract a ghost leviathan long enough for you to get away. The British alternatives to the pig were bigger and also typically quirky, with designs varying from the scooter-like chariot to a rather space-age looking motorised submersible canoe, also known as the Sleeping Beauty, which I'm not gonna lie, actually does look kinda badass. Following the end of the war, military use of diver propulsion vehicles would continue, and they would be modified for civilian use, becoming more streamlined and more efficient as time went on. DPVs usually consist of a watertight casing containing a battery-powered electric motor, which drives a propeller which moves the diver forward. The most common form of DPV is what is known as a diver tug, where the diver holds onto two handles on the side of the vehicle. This is the design we see in Subnautica Sea Glide, placing the diver above the wash kicked out by the propeller. DPVs extend the range and manoeuvrability of the diver piloting it, while also allowing them to stay underwater for longer. The amount of breathing gas a diver uses depends on the amount of physical activity they do. The more they move, the more they will breathe, and the more air they will use. So the DPV allows divers to save their energy, which will slightly increase the time they can stay submerged as they move less. DPVs are typically used in both cave and technical diving, which involves going into deep water, as they help to move heavy equipment more easily. Like with Subnautica's Sea Glide with its light and map accessory, real-life DPVs can be modified with accessories ranging from lights to compasses all the way to video cameras. But the use of a DPV does have some drawbacks, as moving at an increased speed can increase a diver's chance of ascending or descending in the water too quickly, which can lead to compression sickness, which thankfully is not something we need to consider in the world of Subnautica. DPVs can also result in divers getting colder than their unpowered counterparts, as the increased water flow and reduced physical activity leads to a reduction in temperature. This could have been an interesting mechanic that could have been explored in Below Zero, although this would have probably become very annoying very quickly. Whilst the diver tug might be the most common form of DPV, they aren't the only form they can take, with underwater scooters and boat-assisted towed sleds being popular options for fun and research purposes. As diver propulsion vehicles increase in size, they become more similar to small submarines and are known as wet subs. Military DPVs are commonly referred to as swimmer delivery vehicles, and are often used by the world's militaries to transport SEAL teams and their equipment to and from intended targets. For missions that take place at long range, swimmer delivery vehicles can contain their own onboard air supply to refill diver scuba gear whilst travelling, as the divers continue to wear their equipment when inside the wet sub as there is water within it, and that's how the vehicle gets its name. Because it's wet. Not just satisfied with small handheld propulsion devices or small submarine-like vehicles, divers 
divers would later go on to develop the subskimmer as the perfect combination between an inflatable surface speedboat and a submersible vehicle. On the surface, the vehicle is powered by a petrol engine like a typical speedboat, but that noisy engine also has the ability to be sealed up and packed away, allowing the vessel to descend beneath the waves powered by watertight thrusters. Maybe this could be an interesting vehicle that we could see in Subnautica 3, skipping between surface and submerged travel. Many types of diver propulsion vehicle can be found around the world today in holiday destinations, and you can even pick one up yourself on Amazon in a stylish shade of red if you fancy trying one out for yourself. But make sure you have adequate training before you try that, otherwise things could get a little, um, messy. So there you have it. That's the real life inspiration behind Subnautica's Sea Glide and how these vehicles were first invented. Do you think we could see other forms of diver propulsion vehicles in a future Subnautica game? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Subnautica's vehicles, then you should click right here to find out more, and I'll see you over there to tell you all about them.